Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Satu Sana Surah. Assalamu alaikum sisters and brothers, this is uh, Riyad Razazi, we're coming here to the uh, Sira series uh, Walking with the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam This is, uh, today is episode number 22, right, episode number 22 Those of you on Facebook and those on Instagram, I uh, hope you guys are doing great Jazakum Allah khair for joining, may Allah Azza wa bless you, barakallahu feekum حفظكم الله أراكم وعافاكم Yesterday, what did we talk about yesterday? We started talking about the Hijrah The prep for the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام After exhausting all the efforts And then the Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام Focused on the Focused on the day of يعني the Hajj when uh, people were coming for Hajj, and then he was, Alihi uh, Salatu Salam, started giving da'wah, and then uh, we talked about, you know, the couple of kids from uh, Al Khazraj, uh, Asad ibn Zawara, and uh, kind of they they uh, came and and they uh, took the message of the Prophet Muhammad Alihi Salatu Salam, went back to uh, Medina, which was Yathrib at the time, and then the Prophet Muhammad Alihi Salatu Salam, and then they came back the following year. There were twelve of them. They gave the bay'ah to the Prophet ﷺ, and that bay'ah was called bay'at uh, nisa the small bay'ah, the little bay'ah, you know, the bay'ah of women, which, uh, uh, you know, it, why it was called bay'at nisa the bay'ah of women, it did not include uh, fighting in it, you know, it included everything else except fighting, except, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporting him in, with all the means, except with the, the blood, and, and they said they were ready to do it with their wealth, but not with their blood. But then they came back the following year again, uh, and there were 75 giving the bay'ah to the Prophet, saying, we're ready to host you. And then Prophet Muhammad told the Sahaba to start the migration process, to start the migration process to Al-Madinah. The, the Prophet Muhammad um, told Abu Bakr, that, uh, you know, to uh, sort of like hold on because Abu Bakr kept coming to Rasulullah asking him if he was to migrate and then the Prophet, you know, kept telling him to wait. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get him, you know, a partner, you know, during that, uh, throughout that, that uh, journey. And then Abu Bakr was hoping that that partner would be the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And then came that night where uh, Quraysh, they were planning, you know, they were plotting to come and kill the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam. And the Prophet told Ali, you know, to take his place and to give back the amanat, to give back the amanat to the uh, Quraysh, because Quraysh, although they were, they they uh, did not believe in the Prophet Muhammad, but they knew they knew he was uh, al amin al amin, uh, he he was the trustworthy, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they used to keep their amanat with him. And then uh, Ali radiallahu anhu took the place of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Prophet Muhammad came out at night with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu uh, leaving uh, Mecca uh, and, then, and then residing in that cave called Cave of Thor, the cave or Ghar Thor. Brothers and sisters, this Ghar Thor, when the Prophet reached it, he did not know that there was a Ghar in the top of this mountain. He just was running away from, from Quraysh. And the Prophet, as I mentioned yesterday, he took all the means. And the means was, uh, he had, a, uh, you know, he had a, a guide. Uh, he had a guide with him. And that guy wasn't even a Muslim that guided him out. He had uh, another, uh, uh, a Ghanam, a shepherd, by the name of uh, Amr ibn Fuhaira. Amr ibn Fuhaira was the shepherd who had the, you know, who had his cattle with him to cover up, you know, to cover up the... Uh, to cover up the uh, the traces, the mark, you know, the, the, the of the um, of the of the, the camels, and then uh, uh, Asma radiallahu anhu, Allah, my brothers and sisters, Asma she used to bring the food to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi wasallam. And this is where we stopped yesterday. You know, this is where we stopped yesterday because I told you about something really amazing about Asma. She used to, you know, she used to walk all the way from Mecca. Ghafthul is in Mecca, but it's in the outskirts of Mecca. 
right? It's about, you know, almost 10 kilometers. You know, it's not, it's not very close. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's about, you know, driving. It took us at least 15 minutes to drive from, you know, uh, the Haram all the way to, you know, to the place where the Jabal Nur was. Is the Mount of Nur on top of the Jabal Nur there was this Ghar, Ghar, uh, uh, Ghar Hera. I mean, I'm sorry, not Ghar Jabal Nur. You know, Ghar Thor, Ghar Thor. There are too many caves in Mecca. So we're going to talk about Ghar Hera later on. I mean, we talked about Ghar Hera, in fact, in Mecca. But here we're talking about another cave called Cave of uh, Thor. That's where the Prophet hid with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda. So uh, we talked about Abu Bakr covering up all the holes and then he got bitten by by snake and uh you know and abu bakr was also scared when he told prophet muhammad ya Rasulullah, if they were if they were just to recline they would be able to see us and then the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu salam uh, told him not to be sad if yaqulu li sahibihi la tahzan la tahzan inna allah ma'ana don't be sad allah is with us is with us فأنزل الله سكينته عليه وأيده بجنود لم تروها الله سبحانه وتعالى he put down or brought down his سكينة the سكينة the tranquility well, that's what سكينة means brothers and sisters سكينة means tranquility Abu Bakr is so uh, is panicking uh, he was scared not for himself but he was scared because of uh, of uh, you know Quraysh wanting to kill Prophet Muhammad so he was that's why he was worried and uh, and uh, so so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was telling Prophet Muhammad that he was scared Allah revealed the ayah you know the Prophet Muhammad tells sahib, sahib يعني his friend لا تحزن, don't be sad Allah is with us and I mentioned yesterday, if Allah is with you, what that means, right, sisters and brothers? You remember? Those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram, if Allah was to be with you, you have everything, correct? But you could have everything. But if Allah is not with you, you have nothing. أموال الدنيا إذا الله عز وجل ليس معك خسرت كل شيء وإذا الله معك ربحت كل شيء If Allah is with you you win everything but if Allah is not with you you lose everything Am I making sense brothers and sisters? A man could have everything, but his heart and his chest could be so tight. You feel that tightness in the heart. You may have the wealth. You may have the dunya. But still you feel the tightness of the heart. Yet, another person who may be a miskin, he doesn't have as much. But his heart, his chest is as big as the ocean. Well, as the other, his heart is, he has the latest car and the latest phone and the latest and the greatest of everything. His kids, they go to the best school. He lives in a, in a mansion. But his heart is like a, it's 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 tighter than than the eye of a needle. فإذا كان الله معك معك كل شيء وإذا خسرت الله خسرت كل شيء. So that's why I said, if Allah is with you, you have everything. But if Allah is not with you, you have nothing. 
you lost everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put down the sakina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put down the sakina, and this is where you and I meet today. You and I, we need that today. We need that sakina, that tranquility of the heart. Sakina, rahat al qalb, rahat al bal. The peace of mind and the peace of heart. Where is it? Where is it? It is only in the environment of Iman where you can find that Sakina. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم He is the one who sent down سكينة tranquility upon the hearts of the believers so that their hearts might find peace and peace هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين. It is only Allah who sent down the sakina. You cannot find sakina in music. You cannot find sakina in listening to music. You cannot find sakina in going to bars and clubs and pubs. You cannot find sakina getting lost anywhere else. You can't go and travel anywhere just to look for sakina. It is only Allah who gives the second. It is only Allah who can give the second. And if Allah was to bless you with the second, it means tranquility, you'll feel tranquil. Your hearts will be at ease. And if your heart is at ease, your mind is at ease. This is what controls everything. This is what controls everything, is the heart. It is the heart that gives messages to the entire body. If the heart is filled with the love of the dunya, then your mind is not at peace. If your heart is filled with the love of materialistic things, then you are in total loss. Because you, you, there's some people who can't even sleep at night. They have to take medication to go to sleep. They have everything but they can't even go to sleep at night peacefully they have to take some sort of medication to go to sleep but with us others who who are close to Allah they may get at some point, they may get, they may feel bad, they may feel sad, they're human beings. But they know. They know. If they were to feel that sadness, or they feel confused, or lost, or deceived, or heartbroken, they know. They know what to do. They go back to Allah. Dakarullah. Dakarullah. They start remembering Allah. They are in the mention of Allah, in the remembrance of Allah. Dakarullah. 
for the Quran. So Allah will remember them, as Allah says in the Quran. Well, as the others, Nasullah fa nasiyahum. Nasullah fa nasiyahum. So you choose for yourself. You choose for yourself. You only, because there are only two categories. Those, they make a mention of Allah. Allah will make a mention of them. And there are those who forget about Allah. Allah will forget about them. This is how it is. لا تحزن. لا تحزن. Don't be sad. Allah is with us. لا تحزن. Allah is with you. Don't be sad. That's what the Prophet told Abu Bakr. And that's what I'm telling you and telling myself. Don't be sad. Allah is with you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down his sakina. And he blessed, he gave him victory with soldiers. And the soldiers of Allah are not necessarily angels. The soldiers of Allah could be the guardians of Allah, could be anything. When the Prophet Muhammad told Ibn Abbas, when Prophet Muhammad told Ibn Abbas, he was riding behind him, and he told him, "Ya Gula, inni uhi muka kalimat. Ihfad Allah yahfadak. Ihfad Allah tajidu tujahak. Ida saalta fasal Allah." وَإِذَا اسْتَحَبْتَ فَاسْتَحِبْ بِاللَّهِ He turned towards him and he says, O oh, Ghulam, O oh, boy, I shall teach you some words. I shall teach you some words. So Prophet Muhammad is trying to summarize all the advices in a, in a golden platter for, for Ibn Abbas. So he told him, I shall teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Allah shall protect you. Safeguard his commands. Allah shall protect you. When you safeguard Allah's commands, when you safeguard the commands of Allah, such as salah, such as the recitation of the Quran, such as the remembrance of Allah, such as staying away from halal, uh, from haram, and doing halal, such as such as giving sadaqah, be mindful of him, and then what will happen in return? Allah will protect you. He will protect you in your health. He will protect you in your work. He will protect you at home, your home. He will protect your family. He will protect your loved ones. He will protect things that, you, that you are dear to you. You shall find him from, you know, as your guardian. And then he tells him, when you ask, ask of Allah. When you ask, ask of Allah. When you beg, beg Allah first. You see, our problem, sisters and brothers, our problem is, because we're human beings, what happens to us is, when sometimes, you know, something happens to us, the first thing we think to happen is, who am I going to go to? Your kid gets sick. The first thing you think of, I need to take him to the doctor. 
you get arrested, you get a ticket, you get uh, uh, sued. The first thing you think of, what lawyer I'm going to go to. Whereas the first thing you and I should be thinking of is Allah first. And then take the means. And then go to the doctor. And then go to the lawyer. And then go to the mechanic. And then go to the dead. And then go here and there. But the first thing you and I should be thinking of if some musibah was to be before on us is Allah. So the Prophet told uh, Ibn Abbas, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَيِ اللَّهِ when you ask, ask of Allah. When you beg, beg Allah. Sisters and brothers, listen to this one here. Listen to me very, very carefully. Listen to this segment right here. It's very, very important. He says, when you beg, beg of Allah. When you ask, ask of Allah. And then he says, when you, when you seek assistance, seek assistance from Allah. What is the difference between asking and seeking assistance of or seeking help? What is the difference between su'al or between isti'ana? Don't we say that in Salat, in Fatiha all the time when we recite the Fatiha? In our Salah or without even our Salah but when we recite the Fatiha, what do we say? We say, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ But before that you say You alone we worship and you alone we seek help from. What does that mean? That means I know, I know the difference between asking is you know, asking Allah means with regard to something that I cannot do. I can't do this. I cannot guide my son. I cannot guide my daughter. I cannot guide my, 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 my wife. I cannot guide here. I, cannot, I can't guide. I cannot. There's, you know, there's something I can do. There's something I cannot do. So when you ask of Allah, you ask of Allah of things which you cannot do. But with things that you can do. Such as, I can cook. I can cook. All right? But then I need to seek the help of Allah Azza wa to help me cook. I can go to work. So you can seek the help of Allah when you go to work. But when my son gets sick, I cannot give him shifa. So I ask the shifa from Allah Azza wa Jal. The difference between asking and between seeking help. So the Prophet Muhammad told Ibn Abbas, says, when you ask, he says, when you ask, ask of Allah. And when you seek help, seek help of Allah. You go to work. You have work. On the way to work, seek help of Allah. Allah, help me do my job. Allah, help me do my cooking. Allah, help me do my thing. Allah, help me this. Allah, assist me with that. So he says, when you ask, ask of Allah. And when you seek help, seek help of Allah. Let us go back to Prophet Muhammad and, and Abu Bakr in the cave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. And the beautiful thing, brothers and sisters, they remained there. They remained there for three days. Who used to bring them food? Brothers and sisters, remember who used to bring them food? I mentioned this yesterday. Who used to bring them food for the three days? I mentioned it yesterday. Do you guys remember? Those of you on Facebook and those of you on Instagram. Asma. Asma bint Abu Bakr. Yes. Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr. She used to bring them food. And... Uh, and uh, and you know something that a lot of people don't know about? Asma kanat hamil. Kanat hamil. Fi shahar as-sabi'a. Wa ta'ati bil-akil kulla yawm. Min muddath thalath ayyam. Min 
مكة وين الكعبة إلى غفطور for three days she was pregnant in her seventh month and she used to walk from where the Kaaba is that's where you know in that area there where the house of Abu Bakr she used to walk from there carrying the food all the way to Ghafto. People did not know. They knew that Asma, you know, Asma used to bring food, but bringing food with a big belly. Imagine the sacrifice that these people have made. They made so much sacrifice. Imagine, you know, when a, when a woman is her in her seventh month, you know, in pregnancy, she has a pretty heavy belly, doesn't she? Sisters, you tell me. I don't know, but I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, because I've, <laughs> I've never went through it, but I've seen it. I've seen women, you know, pregnant, seven month pregnant. And I mean, they've got a big belly. So it's a heavy belly carrying, you know, who, who was she pregnant of, by the way? Asma. Asma, she's the husband, she's the, the, the wife of uh, Az Zubair, Az Zubair bin Awam. Asma, she was the. A wife of Az Zubair al Awam. She was pregnant of whom? She was pregnant carrying carrying Abdullah ibn Az Zubair from Al Abadila. Abdullah, who will be the first newborn in Medina. Allahu Akbar. The very first newborn of the Muhajirin when they will go, go Hijra to Medina, the very first newborn will be Abdullah ibn Az Zubair. So, uh, she was carrying that baby, carrying the food, so much so she had to cut her, you know, her braids to carry the food with. Walking all the way for three days to give the food for the Prophet Muhammad. Jibreel, why didn't Jibreel bring down the food? They're stuck here. In that cave, ya yeah, Jibreel, you know, bring down some food to the Prophet. Why don't you just, you know, you know, solve this out? Why don't you just bring the Burak? Prophet Muhammad will be in a, you know, in Medina in a blink of an eye. The Burak that took the Prophet to uh, to the Quds and then to the heavens in a, in an evening, he could have taken him to Al Medina in a blink of an eye. Yet, Prophet Muhammad had to endure a lot of hardship to migrate from Mecca to Medina. So Prophet Muhammad, he left on a Monday, Mecca. And then he reached Medina on a Monday as well. It took him 14 days. The whole trip, brothers and sisters, a trip that takes, like I said yesterday, by car between four to five hours, right? By car, depending how fast you drive. It took him, it took him 14 days. He left Mecca on a Monday and he reached uh, Quba on a Monday. So what happened, brothers and sisters, when he reached uh, 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 you know, the outskirts of Medina? He did not go to Medina directly. He went into the outskirts, a place called Quba. Those of you who've been to Medina before, sisters and brothers, I'm sure you must have gone to Medina to Quba to pray, you know, Tulaka there, because the Prophet says, "Whosoever makes wudu at home, and then he goes and he prays Tulaka in in uh, in Masjid Quba, he will have the reward of doing Umrah. He will have the reward of Umrah. So if you were to, you know, uh, make wudu in your home and then go to that Masjid, you will get the ajr. So the Prophet Muhammad, sallam, he went there and he founded the very first Masjid in history. Of Islam, Masjid Quba. Masjid Quba. Alayhi salatu was salam. And then he remained in the uh, in Quba there, sisters and brothers, uh, with the uh, the tribes of Banu Auf. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, he went and he led the Salat al-Jum'ah, 
the first Friday in history, you know, when Prophet Muhammad moved to Medina, that masjid where the Prophet Muhammad prayed or led the Friday still exists until today. Those of you, again, who've been to Medina, they must have visited this masjid, you know, during the tour, the ziyarat or the mazarat. You know, when you go there, they take you on a tour. They take you to uh, Quba. You pass by the Masjid Jum'ah called Masjid of Friday, where the Prophet led his first Friday, you know, which is not too far from Quba. And then they take you to Uhud. These are the, you know, normally the places that they, where they take you to. Masjid al Qiblatain, the two Qibla mosques. So we talk, you know, we will talk about these things, inshallah ta'ala. So the Prophet Muhammad went, and then, and then after he prayed Friday, and then on Friday, he proceeded towards Medina. He proceeded towards Medina, alayhi salatu wassalam. When he proceeded towards Medina, brothers and sisters, the Sahaba were there, they were welcoming him, they were, you know, all were there. A lot of, of course, by the way, sisters and brothers, some Sahabis did not know who the Prophet Muhammad was. Do you know who? There was no social media at the time, there was no internet, there was no TV. The only people who knew Prophet Muhammad was those 75 that went from, you know, Medina at the time to uh, Mecca to give the oath of allegiance to the Prophet Muhammad to give him the bayah. These were the only people who knew Prophet Muhammad and how he looked like. The rest they did not know. The people of Medina, they never seen Prophet Muhammad. So here Prophet Muhammad was coming, the guide and Abu Bakr and Prophet Muhammad together, three camels. So they looked from far, they saw three camels coming. They didn't know who the Prophet Muhammad was. All of a sudden, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu Allah, took off his kind of like amama or abaya, and then he shaded it on top of Rasulullah to cover him from the you know the, the heat of the sun. He put you know his cover up on top of Rasulullah, just covering him against the the heat of the sun, so people knew that the man in the middle was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, there was this, uh, there is this narration that says when Prophet Muhammad entered, you know, the, the people started singing, Tala but there's some weakness, you know, just so you know, there is some weakness in the, uh, in the, in this, uh, you know, in this report with regard to, you know, singing the Tala al-Badaru alayna. Although it's mentioned in all the books of Hadith, in all the books of Sira, I'm sorry, in all the books of the Sira, they mention this, uh, this, um, you know, the this incident where the Sahaba went out, people from Mecca and Medina singing, you know, Tala al Badr alayna, Tala al Badr alayna, min thaniyat al Wada. وجب الشكر علينا ما دعا للعداء أيها المبعوث فينا جئت بالخير المطاع جئت شرفت المدينة مرحبا يا خير داع And Prophet Muhammad entered Medina صلى الله عليه وسلم what did he do first when he entered Medina? He came, came down from his camel. The camel of the Prophet. Her name is Al-Qaswa. Prophet Muhammad came down. And then the first thing he wanted to do is, of course, to build the masjid. But where are we going to build the masjid? So he came down from his camel. And then he let the camel go around. And then, lo and behold, the camel started, you know, walking around. And then she came to a spot. She stopped. And then, again, she went around. She went around as if she's going on a scavenging trip, looking for something. Looking around, going around, going around. And then she came back again into that same spot. And then she kneeled down. That spot, brothers and sisters, listen to me carefully. That spot today is where the minbar, the original minbar of the Prophet Muhammad is. Not the new one. That the in the in the rawda, in the rawda where the rawda is. You know, people who've been again in Medina and those who prayed in the rawda, they know what I'm talking about. 
you know, the mission of the Prophet. So until today, there is this mihrab, this, you know, where the member is, where the Prophet Muhammad used to stand for, for, the, uh, for, the, for the khutbah, when he used to give that lecture. So right there, that's exactly where the camel had kneeled down. And then the Prophet said, we will build the masjid right here. Who does this land belong to? He asked. They said that it belongs to a couple orphans by the name of Sahel and Suhail. So he called them, called them. So they came and they said, uh, they are from Banu Najjar. They are from Banu Najjar. And the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam asked them, we would like to buy this land from you. They said, Ya Rasulullah, it's yours, take it. It's yours, take it. He said, no, we want to buy it from you. Do you know how much they sold him the land where the masjid is today? Do you know, brothers and sisters, how much Sahel and, Suh and, Suh and, and, and Suhail, those orphans, sold their land that they inherited from their father? How much they sold that to the... Initially, as I said, they did not want to take money. But they told Prophet, take Prophet Muhammad says, no, we shall buy it from you. And Prophet Muhammad didn't have any money either. He had to borrow, he had to take money from, from who? From Uthman. How much did they sell him the land where the masjid is today? What did the Prophet do? And how long did it take for that masjid to be built? One month, one year, one week, two months? How long did it take for that, you know, for that masjid to be built? And what was the very first speech Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam gave to the people of Al-Ansar? His first speech. Because now he had to unite between the Muhajireen, those who migrated, and the Ansar. He had to unite between them to, to cause some unity. Alayhi salatu salam. So what was his first speech? Everybody's excited. Rasulullah is here. Rasulullah is here. They get to see him. And they believe in him. They get to earn the title of Sahabi and Sahabiyya. Right? They get to earn the title Sahabi companion, male companion and female companion. So they're all there. Listen to the Prophet Muhammad and here Prophet Muhammad comes to give his very famous speech that was made of one sentence or maybe two sentences at the most. Four words. How big was the masjid initially? How big was the masjid initially? How big it is today? How many doors? By the way, where was the Qibla? Because the Qibla at the time used to be towards, towards where? Towards the Quds. The Qibla used to be towards the Quds. So much so that the Jews, they used to, they used to really kill, you know, the Muslims. Your Qibla is towards, you know, the Bayt al-Maqdis. Which is towards the, the uh, you know, the north. And Mecca is towards the south. When would the order to change the Qibla would be sent down and revealed? Why? Why would Allah Azza wa you know, change that order? Changing the order of the Qibla from Quds, Palestine to Mecca. Why would he do that? Quds is one of the holy mosques, isn't it? What are the virtues of Medina? Brothers and sisters, all the fara'id, all the fara'id, all the obligatory actions were revealed in Medina. Salah was the only farida that was given from the heavens. But even salah, it was not, it was given as five, but the order to it, like at the time it was only twos, 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 twos. They used to pray two. They used to pray Dohar two. They used to pray Asr two. They used to pray Maghrib two. They used to pray Fajr two. They used to pray Isha two. Everything changed in Medina. Al-Hijab. Al-Hijab. 
there was the order of hijab. No, it did not come in Mecca. It came in Medina. All the fara'id, my brothers and sisters, I was saying all the fara'id. So what are the, the, the fada'il, the virtues of Medina to Nabi? There's so many virtues of Medina to Nabi. What are these virtues of Medina to Nabi? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Nabiina Muhammad. What did Anas said, radiallahu anhu wa ardah, when he saw Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam coming in? What did he say about Medina? Why, sisters and brothers, those of you who've been there, in Medina and Mecca. Why the people of Medina are really soft. And the people of Mecca, they tend to be harsh. Why the people of Medina are soft. Why the weather in Medina is cooler, softer, nicer. Why when you go to Medina, you feel, subhanAllah, that peace. Although Mecca, Mecca, the land of Al-Wahi, the land of the Anbiya, the Anbiya, they came, all the Anbiya, they went and they made Tawaf. But when you go to Medina, you have a different feeling. Medina to Nabi. Why? Allah. You got it, guys? You got this? Brothers and sisters, you got it? Huh? I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. That, that Anas radiallahu anhu wa Anas, he said, Ali radiallahu anhu wa دخل علينا رسول الله المدينة فأنار منها كل شيء. He said, she said, when the prophet came to Medina, Medina got enlightened with the with the nur of the prophet Muhammad. Ali said to say, that's why it's called Medina al-Munawwar. Medina al-Munawwar. By the way, what are some of the names of Medina? The virtues of Medina. There's so many things that we need to talk about, brothers and sisters. And I know you read it, you know it. It is definitely a cliffhanger. It is definitely a cliffhanger. Those of you who've come in late, this is a session you do not want to miss. So sorry for your loss. Really sorry for your loss. It is a session you do not want to miss. You want to go back and watch it from the beginning. It will be recorded on Facebook and Instagram, inshallah ta'ala. And YouTube as well. You know, go back and watch it. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for attending today's lecture. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. It was, uh, it was a blessing. <sighs> Alhamdulillah. You, you feel good. In this type of environment, although we're not in the masjid, but we are in a good environment talking about Allah, talking about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talking about the seerah of khayri khalqillah. Khayri khalqillah. يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول ها uh, you know that one يا رسول سلام عليك يا نبي سلام عليك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد all right brothers and sisters again thank you so much for joining may Allah bless you may Allah reward you Please remember next week, insha'Allah ta'ala, next week, next Friday, again, and Saturday, and Sunday, bi'idnillah. How did Asma know where Prophet Muhammad was? Yes, in the cave. It was Amr ibn Fuhayra, the guide, who, uh, the shepherd, who, uh, who told them, you know, and he, uh, that, Umay, that, that the shepherd told Ab uh, Abdul Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abu Bakr, who, uh, uh, who used to come, or Abdul Abd Rahman, used to come uh, and tell, and tell, uh, who you who went and tell him, and then he told his sister, and then the sister went, and she started, get, you know, bringing food to the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, right? So that, you know, he told her brother, and then her brother told her, and then she came to, uh, she was bringing, you know, the food, carrying the food to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. I don't know if you have any other questions, brothers and sisters. If not, thank you again. Thank you so much for joining. May Allah bless you. One more time, those of you who come in late, please go back and watch the session or any session by that you know which you have missed. Uh, make sure you share this, please, with your loved ones. Share them. What are you going to lose? 
No, you're not gonna lose, you're gonna win, you're gonna learn, you're gonna earn lots of rewards by sharing the khair. Share the khair, go to my YouTube channel, inshallah. Go to my YouTube channel and share, 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 share the khair, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Those of you on Facebook, those of you on Instagram, Assalamu alaikum.